Oh, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Overtime, your one-stop shop for all things RLCS and Rocket League Esports. I'm here with my normal Motley crew of Quinn Lobdell and Findable Carpet, but joining us for the majority of the season is going to be the Shogun himself. How are you doing, my friend? Uh, it's actually cold, cold to be back. Uh, LA is absolutely roasting, although I did hear mm. it was kind of a lot hotter. It was roasting week. a bit more last week, for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, you, missed, you missed the blaze, but that's probably a good mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, we've, we've talked about it a few times, but like the fire, like it was my house, street, houses that had firemen in their backyard spraying the actual fire. Like that's how close it, yeah. was, it was to my actual It was location. kind of surreal. It was like, yeah. I wasn't really like worried because it's not like it's going to catch you off guard. It doesn't sneak up on you. Yeah. But it was still one of those like, whoa, wow, <laughs> this, is, this is real. Right. Like it's, it's on yeah, fire. You can only be so comfortable when it's raining ashes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, actually, <laughs> the the furniture in my backyard had actually like pink sp like dots all over from the fire retardant that the planes were dropping. Really? So like it was actually on like. See, that's actually that's surreal cool. to someone like me. Like the UK doesn't get anything like that. We had. Because it never stops raining. Yeah. Yeah. We had the tremors of someone else's earthquake once and a roof tile fell off and that made national news. <laughs> like, we don't get anything close to stuff like that. Uh, speaking of tremors, making waves through the Rocket League community is week number one of RLCS that just happened and we had some crazy upsets. The standings from North America here, NRG, crown on the top as usual, nothing unexpected there. And honestly, kind of for North America, Everything's about where we expected it. FlyQuest and Ghost, you can see, didn't play. We'll get to see them in week number two. But rough start there for Renegades. Emotion also not able to find a win, but looking stronger than we expected. And you, you can look at their schedules. We'll talk a little bit more about it in a bit. But some of those teams at the bottom did have a very rough schedule starting off in the mm -hmm. first week. So mm -hmm. it definitely gives you something to look forward to. And I, I, maybe, I, I don't know if I speak for all the Rogue fans, but I was excited to see that with their new roster, they were still able to perform. Granted, their results might not have reflected it, but they seem to do well. They certainly did, and yeah. So the big three, the big story here was NRG, Cloud9, and G2 coming out clean, coming mm -hmm. out without dropping a game. G2 only played one game, but it was up against Renegades, who had a pretty rough week as they went mm -hmm. up against G2 and also went up against NRG, only winning one game there against G2. So Renegades having a rough start here, but the big three staying clean in North America. Yeah, and I think that's a huge thing right now. North America's always had a problem with consistency of their top teams. NRG usually only being the one we go to World Championships and go, okay, it's on NRG. Mm -hmm. Yeah, We mm -hmm. hope the rest you do okay, but NRG are the main boys for North America. This time around, North America's got a couple more hopes there, with Rogue kind of being that 3.5 yeah. out of that group. I honestly see it doing a pretty good season. That's going to pop out very quickly. Okay, bye. Um, but <laughs> it's going very well. Uh, the top teams performing in this opening week is very good. Renegades, it's a meh, but at the mm. same time, this was not going to be a week we expect them to do well in. It's not a week that they expect them to do well in. Yeah, I don't think the big question was about G2. Ush. They only played one game <laughs> there, and it was against Renegades. And the question with G2 always is which G2 shows up, because Renegades, if G2 shows up in kind of the ball-chasing style we'd seen them in before, Renegades could have easily taken the win, but they only get one game there. Yeah, I think that any way you look at Renegades' schedule, you mentioned it, like... Expecting them to win games would have been really looking on the on the good side or like expecting, you know, just stars to align. I, I think for them to lose both games doesn't necessarily mean they had a bad weekend. It's hard mm -hmm. to beat energy and especially G2. We've seen them improve since the summer and they came out came out pretty strong, I think, through the mm -hmm. play ins all the way until their first week. So you know, it's hard for Renegades to be too upset with themselves considering the strength of their schedule. Now, do we do we feel like we were talking about the big three here, and you mentioned 3.5 being Rogue. Like, Rogue was one of the auto-qualified teams for North America. They were one of the number two, they were the number two team from, from league play of mm -hmm. season three. What's keeping Rogue out of our out of our top three here as far as the big three? I mean, they had a big roster change. You had Turtle on there, and that was the trio that we kind of spoke on. They were like they were like the North American princess. Everyone mm. loved them so much, uh, especially at LAN. They had such a huge fan base because they have so much personality. Everybody and when you wanted to dance with them at that ball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but once you, once you mess that up at all, you're always fearful. You're always a bit scared of how are they going to do. Insolence is, I think, is a fantastic player, but we know he's had a rough situation with some of his previous rosters. So I think it's just because they've had a recent change that it's one of those situations where It'll take about half a season before we can determine where they truly sit. All right, so looking forward into season, into week number two and the rest of the season, talking about North America explicitly, I want to ask you guys, who's hot for you guys? Who's the team to watch? Who's the team to be keeping our eyes on? Shogun, who you got right now? Um, right now, I think Cloud9 really proved exactly why they are going to be a top team. They had a fantastic summer coming into this, winning the majority of the events they took a part in. Gimmick, though. Oh, mm. I love Gimmick does not get enough credit, ever. Mm. I love the way Gimmick plays. He's so smart. He's always looking for the correct opportunity. We were talking earlier on about the fact that North America sometimes doesn't go for a pass when they really should. Gimmick is always looking for that pass. 
Mm -hmm. gimmick, uh, gimmick really surprised me because usually when you have players who aren't like, you know, staples of the competitive scene, they actually tend to be a lot more, you know, just individual type of players, not really looking for a lot of teamwork, not, like you mentioned, not really looking for passes. But Gimmick, not only is he great at pressuring the ball and playing aggressively, which usually seems to be mutually exclusive from also being a team player, he's mm -hmm. just got like the whole balance and, and really impressed me just as much. Is Cloud9 your hot team as well? I'd agree, yeah. I, I think okay. actually Rogue really impressed me. I think we mentioned in Soul that team roster change being a, mm -hmm. a big worry for them. But it isn't the, the team roster change. They just had bad performances throughout the summer. Sure. Just didn't yeah. live up to where they were, and that's why they dropped down. I don't think it's a matter of switching their rosters, but I think they showed that in Seoul, you know, there is still that honeymoon period, so we don't know really how they're going to do later on, but there is potential for this team. I think they're looking good. Yeah, for, for me, looking forward to week number two, FlyQuest is the team I've got the most thoughts about and the team I'm most excited to see moving mm -hmm. forward. They looked great in the qualifier there. Sad Jr. looked in the best form. I think I've seen him in two seasons, so I'm excited to see him play. Looking forward into week number two. Who you got, Carpet? I mean, as far as the two from that we've seen perform so far, I was a toss-up between Cloud9 and Rogue. Mm. And I think just for the sake of, we've already talked enough about Cloud9, I don't need to beef sure. them up anymore. Uh, for arguments on the Rogue side, when, like Matt, I've always been a big fan of, and I, I'll probably admit, I'm, I'm a little bit of a fanboy of the player, but I love watching him play. He's so smart and effective. He does the things he needs to, and he's kind of that accidental star. Sure. You, he doesn't. It doesn't ever feel like he's ball chasing, but man, does he get highlight plays every single game he's a part of. And then him and Sis working together, every now and then, Sis can, it, you know, we, I understand that he has a game where he was rough, and especially last mm -hmm, weekend, mm -hmm. there was a game where I was a little bit scared because Sis was missing some things he shouldn't. But if he can keep his head in and they get that fan ramping up, through, like all their fans like rooting for them all season, I think they're going to be a really, really powerful team. Okay, so I just, I just want to point out that none of us wanted to talk about NRG. Is it because, is it, I, it it's obviously they go 2-0. They, they come out only dropping one game here. Is it because the, all the who's hots are the little fires on the volcano of NRG and we're just like ignoring the fact that we're all on this mountain or like like why are we not talking about NRG right now? I think <laughs> anyone that was like the good kid in school kind of knows this position of you're good all the time and now uh, it's just expected of sure. you. And that's yeah. kind of what happened here. If like one of the teams that we weren't expecting to do as well came up and did really well, G2. They mm -hmm. are the problem child. Sure. <laughs> that come up this week, played really well. So we're giving them credit. NRG, just sort of expect it from them at this point. And they performed as yeah. they should. G2 yep. reminds me of the kid where like, you, you, like everyone thinks they're an angel and then you find out like they've been doing a bunch of weird things sure. behind your back. Like, that's G2. It's like, come on guys, just, just get it together. They're, 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 the, they're the kid that like everything was given to them. Their mom bought them like the perfect binder and the TI-80,000 you know, calculator <laughs> and everything like that. And they're like, why are you still not getting good grades right now? But they got the win here in week number one. We'll see how they play in week number two. Now a team that did not have the week that they were hoping for, Emotion here. Talk to me about Emotion right now, guys. They they don't get a win against against Rogue, but they get a win against NRG. They took one game off of NRG. That's the only game they won. How do we feel about Emotion right now? I honestly love the way they can play it against as far as being like the underdogiest of teams coming mm. into North America. I don't I don't think many people had them pegged to make it into league play. RLRS for sure. We mm -hmm. knew they were up there. But I, uh, most people probably had Fibian in this spot, and yep. they took Fibian's spot, and they took it well. They played fantastically in the plans. I think, again, it's just one of those, now they're starting to see, like, oh, this is what we have to play like. This is what we're truly up against week to week. So it, uh, it's like a toss-up. Will we see them just kind of fall apart under pressure of just dealing with monster team after monster team? Or will they click, figure it out, watch the replays, and just slowly improve throughout the season? Yeah. Before anyone else has anything else, I don't know if you guys saw Ty Not Tyler's Twitter. Those guys played in the RLCS in the, like, on the floor of DreamHack Montreal. Mm -hmm. So, like... I don't know many people who can compete in RLCS, like in the middle of like a convention floor with like tons of things going on around you and like not being able to hear a word of your teammates. There's like a little video of it and you know, honestly I'm kind of impressed that they took a game off of what, the three time reigning North American yep. champions probably being unable to even hear their teammates next to them. Yeah. So well, and they, give they, them a break. They give them a break. started the broadcast too. The very first match of mm -hmm. North American League play was a motion versus Rogue. You know, and to come in with a lot of a lot of new players, a lot of rookies on that team, and to be like, oh, what are, what well, yeah, we got to start this show off here, and they don't get any wins, but they get a little bit more comfortable, get the win from NRG. I have I have hopes to step though they will be a competitive team moving forward mm -hmm. and not just be a repeat of some other teams that we've seen in the past that have taken a spot from some team and then not been able to show up. I think Emotion's got it. I think they had a chance. Yeah, I think I'd agree. I mean, we had Ty Not Tyler on last week mm -hmm. saying to you, look, I like to talk. I like to be the main bit of communication there. I'm not too sure how well you've been able to talk and communicate to the rest sure. of this team last week. I think that might have been a major thing missing, but they played really well. 
and I'll give that to them. Alushin, though, is the one I really like the most. He joined a huge group of players that actually scored either one goal or more last week, which is absolutely ridiculous for the RLCS. He needs to keep that going for the rest of the season, though. They need a certified goal scorer. I think it'll be him. Yeah, well, we'll see how they're able to rack their stats up moving forward. Speaking of stats here, our man that gives us all the stats that we do throughout all the shows, DMR Rawlings, we've got him on the line here, and he's, a, I think he's got an interesting point to make about Season 4. DMR? So here's a prediction for you. Season 4 will be the tightest defensive season to date. In Season 1 in league play, we saw 4.7 goals scored per game. That dropped to 4.2 in Season 2, and then 3.8 in Season 3. This season, I project we'll see 3.6 goals per game. Teams that score first win around 70% of the time, and when less goals are scored, every goal matters. Also, with tiebreakers now based on game win percentage, when each team plays only seven series, every win is crucial. So will Energy finish first in North America? I think so. They were the best defensive team in North America last season. They allowed 1.16 goals against per game in league play compared to the league average of 1.91, and in that time they never allowed more than three goals in a game. They only allowed one or less goals 72% of the time, and they kept a clean sheet 20% of the time. Energy is a powerhouse, and they're going to do it again. Awesome. Thanks so much there, DMR. The 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 interesting stat there, 4.7 goals per game in league play of season one, and that's dropped all the way down to 3.8, and you're like an entire goal difference between seasons one and three, and now he's predicting season four to be at 3.6 or so. So these guys, like, it's, it's we're getting down to like three goals a game, you know, three, mm -hmm. maybe four, and that's just, that's, you know, one per side and then one that makes the difference. These guys are really tightening up their defenses. Well, I'm sure we'll see that throughout the season. Last weekend wasn't like that at all. We had goals on top of goals on top of goals. But yeah, defenses are tightening up. NRG, that defense was on fire throughout last week. Yep. But it's either a case of defenses weren't that tight last weekend or offenses are getting more creative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they said the NRG last season, the, the goal average, usually people were allowing it like two goals a game. That was mm -hmm. the league average and they were allowing 1.16. So these guys definitely significantly under. We'll see if they can keep it on here. Still definitely the favorites in North America. Switching gears over to just quickly talk about the RLRS, the rival series and how things are going over there. Fibian comes out of week number one, two, oh, and Super Cops went one and one, defeating, defeating Incognito. So good to see Fibian who, who they get knocked out by emotion but they're gonna try and make the best of that spot down there and see if they can qualify for LCS in season five and, I, and I'm pretty sure when they got knocked down um, who was it I think somebody like had said something on Twitter of like we're gonna prove that we should have been there was, was it like, I know it was a leftover that was leftover yeah. that I mean, they're pretty much the same. I mean, I see them as <laughs> like, very similar they're story. the European yeah. leftovers. It's like they're a team that everyone had projected <laughs> to be up into the RLCS mm -hmm. and something happened during the plane where they didn't make it um, except yeah no that's about yep. it okay yeah, I'm, I'm losing track. There's a lot of teams now. There's 16 teams in each region to keep track they of. Got, they went 2-0. Oh, one of the teams they beat. One of the teams they beat was out of style. Lachinio's team there was mm -hmm. Justin as well. So good to see Fibian show, shaping up in great form. I'm um, gonna take a quick break here from overtime. That's gonna do our, for our recap of North America. When we come back, we'll hop the pond, talk about Europe instead. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. <laughs> 